Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at a way that we can army paint the amazing Death Guard models from Whammer 40k. When we look at an army painting project or a new painting project, it's inevitable that some armies and figures and schemes are simpler than others. Therefore, executing uh, an army of them that's going to look good on the tabletop is easier or, or more difficult depending on that. With the Death Guard, I think the trade-off for the amazing plastics that they've now got is that they do need a little bit more planning and a little bit more work ultimately than some simpler armies. But I think the end result is massively worth it. So when we approach a project like this, what I always think about is what are the key things that I want to hit. So for these Death Guard, it's going to be getting the armor color right, getting that sense of dirt and grime right, but also making sure they don't just look muddy. So we want some definition and we want some contrast in there. To start with, over a black GW Chaos Black Primer, I'm going to airbrush on GW Mournfang Brown. It's just a nice, rich brown color. I've thinned this about 50-50 with Life Color Thinner. I'm spraying about 25 PSI. I'm using one of our signature series, Harder and Steenbeck Infinities for this. And all I'm looking for is a nice solid base coat all over the model. So once I've got that, it's time to start working on the pre-highlight. So I've loaded up my Tamiya Flat White. I've thinned this down about four or five drops of thinner to one drop of paint. And I've used the Tamiya X20A thinner. It's always important when we're using the Tamiya acrylics. I'm picking a light source, so from above and slightly to the side, and then building up in successive, very, very thin layers, I'm looking where will the light hit on the model, where do I want to draw attention to, and hitting those areas with white. And in the shadows, therefore, we've got the brown still. So it's this sort of brown scaling, I guess, just like we would grayscale if we were going white over black. So build it up until we're happy, and you can see we're starting to get contrast into the model via light and dark. Once we're happy with this, we can switch to our colour, and this is where we see why we've left brown in the shadows rather than black. Now I've taken some GW Contrast Paint Militarum Green, and I've thinned this, again about 50-50 using Life Colour Thinner, you can use whatever, Vallejo Thinner, Aircast, whatever, and applying this in thin layers over the whole model. And you notice that the areas that we sprayed white, the green's showing up really nicely on, the areas that we sprayed ground, uh, brown previously, are giving us this really interesting shadow colour. Now when I keep going off camera, I'm just hair drying the model. It's really important we let the layers dry in between because they do dry more solid than they go on. And sometimes you can kill your highlights if you just keep going and going and going. But you can see it's a pretty cool colour for these uh, Plague Marines. If you do go a little bit heavy, with your colour and you lose your highlights like I have here, you can always go back in and reapply them over the top. So I've just taken my Tamiya White Mix, and just focusing on those couple of key areas that I wanted to be a little bit lighter and it really is important with this uh, recipe that we're going to use that we go nice and bright to start with. So I just reapply my white over the top. Because we're using an airbrush and really thin layers of paint, we don't obscure any detail by going back and doing this. And then load up the Militarum green again. A couple of thin coats over the top. It's really nice to be able to go backwards and forwards. It's one of the great strengths of using the airbrush. That's a nice place for us to work from now. I've been round and base coated all the areas on the model that I want to paint metal base coated them black. And for all the trim, I'm going to go for this very, very bright copper colour. It's Metal Colour Series by Vallejo. It's just called Copper. And it's primarily an airbrush paint, but they brush on really nicely, but they will split on your palette if you use a wet palette. So just use a normal little plastic well or tile or whatever it is you use. I'm just going to work around all the trim, which isn't too bad on this guy. And you can see it's pretty bright, it's pretty in your face. It's not a problem. Now I'm going to give the whole model a couple of coats of Vallejo Polyurethane Gloss Varnish. That's in preparation for the next stage. 
It's nothing to do with protecting the paintwork. I simply want a glossier surface so that what I do next will go more into the recesses than the surfaces. So I'm going to grab an enamel wash. Now in this case, it's a AK panel liner for brown and green armor. It doesn't really matter what brand you use, just an enamel wash is what we're looking for. I'm going to thin that down with a little bit of uh, spirit thinner. So in this case, uh, Winsor & Newton Sansador mineral spirits. I don't want to thin it much. You can see it's a nice thick mix still. And we're not going to slop it all over the model like you might see in certain other techniques that we could have used. But we're going to do very much a, a controlled wash all over. And by that I mean, although I'm applying it to all the surface, I'm trying to end my brush strokes in the recesses so that the paint's going to be drawn primarily into them. I don't mind a little bit of this staining the surface and staying on the surface but I want the majority of it in the recesses, and that's why I applied the gloss. I'm going to do a 30k death guard scheme very soon, and that's one where we will be uh, a lot more slopping it all over. So just take your time, work your way around the model, and this is to bring some definition to the armour, so all those recesses are going to get that little bit darker. But enamel washes also have this really lovely shading effect. Now if you apply too much in one go like that, just clean your brush, hold it against it and it will wick up the excess. And I wanted to use enamels rather than oils for this because you do get a slightly different effect. He's looking pretty good. I've left him to dry. Maybe, I don't know, five, ten minutes. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to apply a few splodges of the wash in a few areas on the flat surfaces just to build it up a little bit more. Then I'm going to take a clean brush, a real gentle, just vertical strokes. Just going to pull some of that wash down across the surfaces and we'll just get this very subtle streaked effect across the armour. We're not trying to remove it here, we're just moving it around on the surface. You can see here, just got this lovely effect, just ages the armour up a little bit. Now I'm going to go for my final finish on my armour. So I really wanted a very matte finish here, but not totally. So I've made my own mix of a satin varnish up using five drops of matte to one drop of gloss, and then I've thinned that mix one to one with thinner. Again, spraying 25 psi. For the other metal parts on the model, I don't want the copper trim. I'm just going to base coat them using GW Iron Warriors. It's just a nice, sort of dirty, dark iron colour. It's a bit darker than lead belcher. And this is the first step where we really go, okay, where are we going to spend the time? For his tabard, I'm going to base coat this using Vallejo model color Dectan. I'm going to take a couple of coats to get a smooth finish. And then I'm going to use the same colour for the little maggots that are all over him. And I'll also use it for the weird plague death's head uh, grenade thing he's got as well. So as I said with the uh, silver as well, this is where we start going, okay, where can we speed this process up slightly for army painting? Okay, well, let's see what details are there on the model that we want to bring out a little bit more. Can we use a universal base colour or shading colour or highlight colour? Now for all the weird little horns that he's got growing, I'm just going to base coat them using Vallejo model colour US Olive Drab, which is a sort of green brown colour. For his lenses, I didn't want to do too much contrast for these, 
So I thought I'd go for a nice turquoise color. So I'm gonna base coat them using uh, GW Incubi Darkness. I'm gonna highlight them using GW Sotec Green. For your highlight, just follow the shape of the lens. So in this case, it's a circular lens. So the highlight's gonna be a semicircle. And then in the opposite corner to what you've done in your semicircle highlight, you're gonna put a little dot of white. It's gonna make the lens look reflective. That's three steps on a lens, but it's a small detail and it will bring a lot of bang to the model. For the fleshy bits, so the skin on the death's head thing and the maggots, I'm just going to use a GW Magos Purple Contrast Paint. And again, I'm not just slopping it all over, I'm painting it on, I'm trying to end my brush strokes where I can in the shadows, so I draw the majority of the paint into those. Working with contrast paints is not dissimilar to when you're working with uh, oils and enamels. You have a little bit more uh, work time with them before they dry. So I can go back here, just clean it up a little bit. So I've built that colour up with a couple of layers. And for the weird pus that's dripping out of it, I've got another contrast paint here. This is Plague Bearer Flesh. And I've mixed a tiny bit of the deck tan into it that I had on my palette just to lighten it up slightly. And I've also mixed in a little drop of gloss varnish. This is so that when it's dry, it'll be a little bit shiny, a little bit gooey. I assume Nurgle's Rot will probably give you a similar finish straight out of the pot. But I don't know, I've not tried it. But by adding the gloss varnish in at this stage, it saves me a step later. Now, a little bit of detail on the armor trim. I'm going to go for a little bit of verdigris on the copper. In this case, I've used GW Nihalac Oxide, but any light turquoise color will do. Thin it down and be really sparing with this. Just think about those recesses, those areas that aren't going to get uh, rubbed up against anything. So therefore, you're going to get a bit more corrosion on them. final bit of fun with the armor uh, and some of the extra parts. Uh, I'm going to make up an oil wash. So I've got some mineral spirits, so Windsor & Newton Odorless Artist Thinner, uh, Sansador, and I'm mixing in Windsor & Newton Artist Oil Color Burnt Umber here. I've put a little bit of neat burnt umber on the edge of the dish because I'm going to use that later as well. So firstly, the tabard gets a little wash. and then really liberal wash all over the metal parts, all over the black, and the black to be fair is only on a few tubes and the bolter casing. Get it all over that metal, I'm going to bring some definition, some colour, I'm going to put it all over the uh, sort of bony horns, the growths on him as well, and we can always add a little bit more lower down the model as well, just to represent a bit of dirt and grime from the battlefield. Nice heavy wash on his little tabard thing. And then I've grabbed a little bit of Windsor & Newton Artist Oil Colour Burnt Sienna. It's really worthwhile picking up Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna. You can do an awful lot with them when it comes to simple weathering. And just blob those on on a few areas as well to represent a bit more corrosion rust. Then with a little extra thinner, just going to work that into the model a bit more. You see, it's really starting to come together now. I've left him to dry and I've had the hairdryer on him as well, so he's sort of touch dry at the moment. I'm just going to add a few more blobs of different coloured oil, so the bit of the burnt sienna, a little bit of the burnt umber. And just effectively paint that tabard with the oil paints. Add a little bit of 
bit more rust around that horrible eye socket bit. Anywhere else on the model you want to. Again, I've had the hairdryer on it, and now with a clean brush, it's practically dry. Much like we did earlier on the armor with the enamels, I'm going to do a similar effect here on the tabard with the oils, just to create a little bit of texture, a little bit more dirt and grime. I've left the oils to dry and I've popped them on a simple base. I hope you can see here that what I believe is a relatively complex and daunting model doesn't need to be a real pain to paint. With a little bit of forethought, a little bit of planning, we've been able to produce something that we can replicate across an army that's going to look fantastic on the table and not going to take us forever to paint. I've really enjoyed working on this guy and if you've enjoyed the video and you think, oh, I'd quite like to have a look at oils or enamels, what can I do with them? Consider checking out our Patreon. I often go into a lot more detail on those subjects. It's something I really enjoy. If you found this video interesting, then hit the like button. And if you'd like to hear more from us, then hit subscribe as well. And I'll see you next time.